And Jeff, welcome to TFNN. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, tell us, why should we vote for you? Well, there's so much going on in the city right now. And like you said a minute ago, I was on city council before. At that time, we were rewriting the land codes that paved the way for the development we're seeing today. Yes. So the fact that it's here now, having someone with experience to manage it, get the best out of it that we can, not lose the character of our city, um, just be a part of it is just a good idea. And what do you think, Jeff, are the most, the biggest challenges for all of us in St. Pete right now? Um, what I hear the most, people concerned about the cost of housing, um, rents are gone up dramatically, um, not wanting to push out our, our kids and hospitality workers and, and people that um, just want to stay here. And uh, it's becoming more challenging every day. And there's never, you know, you've been around long enough, I've been around long enough, the people listening to you have been around long enough. It seems like this is a problem everywhere in the whole country. We've been hearing about it for 50 years, and trust me, I, I agree with it. And it always seems like, okay, so what is, what is, what is some of the solutions for that? Well, I, th I think part of it is we have opportunities, and, and again, where my experience comes in, with zoning. There, there's places we can change the zoning to encourage um, development that will be affordable. We've certainly got plenty of underutilized retail corridors now that used to be filled with Kmarts and Sears and, and strip malls that have the opportunity to be apartments and, and mixed use developments. So there's still, it's not like St. Petersburg is built out and there's no place to go. Yeah, now this is so cool what you're saying because what happens folks down here is that we've had, we have 4th Street that's getting built out, we get Central, but it's just as Jeff said, there's no doubt that there's plenty of other places that aren't even close to being built out because there's so much bread that has been in the downtown corridor. Let me ask you this, right? The, the violence aspect in St. Pete, what can we do about that? Because it's pretty intense. I was basically interviewing Driscoll yesterday, Gina Driscoll, and as I was interviewing her, unfortunately, another young kid, 16 years old, gets killed because he's basically has an air rifle up, you know, shooting well, aiming at a cop, but so talk to me about what can be done here. Yeah, this is, this is a national trend. Violent crime is up 30 percent. It is. Um, quite a bit of it is just, I think, COVID related. People have been stuck in their houses. They've been without jobs or they're, they're stressed out. Um, so, so we're going to have to deal with it. In a lot. There's certainly no one silver bullet that's going to fix it. Um, I think we've got a good police chief. We've got a good network of community leaders that will help us make those decisions as to which direction to go with. Um, I'm a big proponent of community policing. I think getting police in the neighborhoods as part of the neighborhood structure so they know what's going on on a, on a first name basis with everyone is a big help. You know, I wonder why that that hasn't, you know, and, and I absolutely agree with you as the, it's a demographic because, you know, I remember when I, when I was a kid, uh, the bottom line is that, you know, whether you from 14 to 19, things are very violent. It was the most violent age then. And then the demographic went down, and you know I, I remember reading all these articles that oh everyone's doing a great job. But my take is that when you have more kids, there's more violence, man. And we demographically, we definitely have more kids now. And you know, so it's like that's part of it. There's no doubt. The frustration's another part of it. Um, the, let's talk a little bit about preschool, like programs, okay? Because it, it would seem that you know if you can get someone young. Well, maybe they'll have a shot to do better things. Yeah, again, and I think that goes, again, back to the, the community policing, um, teaching kids at a young age. And I, I witnessed this. I live in historic Kenwood, which is a popular, stable neighborhood. It wasn't the case 30 years ago. And witnessed firsthand kids that, you know, when the police officer came up to my house because I was involved with the neighborhood association to drop off something for the newsletter, sure. half of them would run and hide. Um, teaching them and, and watching them come around to see that this isn't the bad guy. If you stick around, you can check out the inside of his car, play with the lights, get a sticker badge. They, they learn at a young age, this isn't a bad guy, he's here to help you, he's on your side. Um, it's a good way to start your early years out. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt about that. And it's a shame that even across the country that community policing hasn't been uh, kept up. That's what it seems like. I mean, when I was a kid, a pitcher, I mean, I grew up in South Boston. We had it. The drive was crazy, man, kicking us off every corner. But the bottom line is that it did make a difference. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, where are you with the Rays, the Rays field? I think this is, you know, that 
the, the, it's such a big part, a part of such a huge discussion. Having 85 acres in the heart of a popular downtown to redevelop is just an opportunity that's amazing. And I don't think most people have realized just how big that opportunity is. It, it's actually 12 or 13 projects wrapped into one. Yes. Um, the Razor definitely can be a component of it. I like the idea of a mixed-use stadium. We don't need two stadiums nine blocks away from each other in downtown St. Pete. It would free up some waterfront land if the Rowdies moved uh, in with the Rays. Uh, but the hospital district expanding, USF expanding. Um, again, there, there's nothing in the country anywhere near 85 acres that's on the horizon for any city right now. No, there absolutely isn't. Listen, folks, you can go to Jeff Danner. That's uh, D-A-N-N-E-R.com. Check out De Jeff. Jeff, I wish you luck. Look forward to having you on again. All right, thank you very much. Thanks so much. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.